of everything that doesn't like thee. So as we worship you, we will worship you in spirit and in truth. May we hasten in the footsteps of those who are coming. And may we sing till the power of the Lord come down, we pray. In Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. We are together again, just praising the Lord for something good is about to happen. We are together again, just praising the Lord. We are together again, in one accord. Something good is about to happen. Something good is in store. We are together again. Just praise the Lord. We are together again. We are together again. Just praise the Lord. We are together again. In one accord. Something good is about to happen. Something good is in store. We are together again. Just praise the Lord. I feel good, good, good. I feel good, wonderful, good. Every time I talk about Jesus, I feel good, good, good. I feel good, good, good. I feel good, wonderful, good. Every time I talk about Jesus, I feel good, good, good. Something in my heart like a stream running down. It makes me feel so happy, as happy as can be. When I think of Jesus and what he has done for me, there is something in my heart like a stream running down. If you know the Lord is keeping you, what are you worried about? If you know the Lord is keeping you, why don't you sing and shout, singing glory, hallelujah, praise his name. Every day is just the same. If you know the Lord is keeping you, what are you worrying about? If you know the Lord is keeping you, what are you worrying about? If you know the Lord is keeping you, why don't you sing and shout? Singing glory, hallelujah, praise his name. Every day is just the same. If you know the Lord is keeping you, what are you worrying about? Sing until the power of the Lord comes out. Sing until the power of the Lord Come down, lift up your Don't be afraid Let us sing until the power of the Lord Come down, lift up Sing until the power Come down, sing until the power of the Lord comes down. Lift up your hands, don't be afraid. Let us sing until the power of the Lord comes down. It is all right, all right. Ooh, it is all right, all right. right. As long as I've got my Lord beside me, it is all right. right. As long as I'm happy, it's unto all. As long as He watches over my soul, as long as I am there is control, it is all right. It is all right. All right, oh, it is all right, all right. Was right. I, I have my Lord beside me? It is all right. As long as I have His son to hold, as long as He watches over my soul, as long as I under His control, it is all right. We'll turn to our song sheet to number one. The Lord's a rock, in him we hide, a shelter in a time of storm.
The Lord's a rock in him we hide A shelter in a time of storm Seek your whatever they need A shelter in a time of storm In a weary land Put it heard a joyful sound Jesus save Jesus save 26 we have heard a joyful sound Jesus save Jesus save spread the gladness all around Jesus save Jesus save spread the news to every land climb the sea I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peace of shore, very deeply sick with him, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea, hear my despairing cry, 
of praying Father in heaven and our great king of the universe we truly want to give you thanks and praise for this another evangelistic effort you have put in place to rescue the souls of men I pray now Holy Father that you'll come down 
and that you will loosen us, Lord, from every and any all that the enemy have on us this evening. I pray that you will rain down your Holy Spirit, Lord, like a flood upon this um, Kendra's Cathedral and also an extension in the community, Lord, in the hearing of our voice. Lord, I pray that you'll hasten the footsteps of those who are coming. Be back the force of darkness. Frustrate the plan of the enemy. Lord, I pray that you'll be with the evangelist. I pray that you'll take control of him tonight, Lord, as you have never done before. I pray that you'll take him to heavenly places and that you'll, you'll show him heavenly things to show to us, your people. I pray that your words will go with power and with clarity and with simplicity. I pray that people will cry out, I heal, I heal, I cannot hold it any longer. I pray, Lord, also that you'll pour your blood upon the altar, upon every bench, upon each and every one this evening, God, and at the end, help us to give you alone the glory the honor, and the praise for Christ's sake. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Are you happy to be here this evening? It is the first night of our evangelistic series, Jesus is the Way. And I know that you have come from near, you have come from far, and you are here to celebrate Jesus. We, on behalf of the Olympic Way Seventh-day Adventist Church, welcome you to this spot of ground. And you know, we have a number of visitors. I saw a number of persons coming in this evening that are not a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church at Olympic Way, and you are here with us. I'm going to ask all my visiting friends just to stand, please. Amen, church. Amen, 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 amen. We are happy to have you worshiping with us tonight. And we just ask that you continue to come and be a part of us. And you know, there's a special blessing await you. And we know that your names have been recorded. Continue to come because there, there are going to be surprises under this tent. I pray that you will receive the blessing that God has in store, and the message that will come to each and every one of us from the man of God, I pray that you will receive it. Welcome, Christ welcomes you. And as a result of that, we are going to show you how we welcome. You've got to love everybody if you want to see Jesus. Shall we all stand? Because love everybody if you want to see Jesus, you gotta love everybody if you wanna see God. Don't mind the ways of Father. She's a mother's brother. You gotta love everybody if you wanna see God. You wanna see my God.
the night Olympic way. No man, you can do better than that. Good night, Olympic Way. Amen. Amen. Tonight, I'm standing here to give a tip and health tip. And my topic is on anxiety. We all get stressed and anxious from time to time. But when we have an anxiety disorder, we experience excessive worries, fears, terror, and, and even panic attacks. And this is why we must learn to cope with anxiety and claim the mental health back. It is important that we seek help from a doctor or medical health practitioner or seek therapy to manage this condition. Anxiety can be managed through a mixed approach with medication, therapy, or lifestyle change. So, here's a few strategies to help us to cope with anxiety and, um, and minimize the occurrence of it in its severity. Sleep is a vast importance of mental health. When you have not ad adequate sleep, your mind will not work at its optional level. Exercise optimizes your blood flow, allowing allowing enough oxygen to reach all the vital organs, such as the brains and muscles. The most important exercise, and most importantly, exercise help the body to release the feel-good NRPDINs, stress. It increases happiness and lessens your stress anxiety. To take to take back, to take brisk walk, or simple to, to blast the music and dance. Dancing is great ex exercise and fun, and it exercises the whole body. So Philippians 6 and verse 7 says, Be anxious for nothing, but by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. So, brethren, let us not stress, but trust God, and he will see us through. Good night, everyone. No, man, I need a better good night. You are all looking beautiful. Aren't you children of God? Good night, everyone. And welcome to the first night of our crusade. Aren't you happy to be in the house of the Lord? All right, and I have a little gift for you, you know, a little present. You see, beginning tomorrow, we'll be having our quiz. So I want all my beautiful, bright boys and girls down here looking on. To listen to the evangelist as of tonight onwards we have we have gifts and I want to give away gifts to all my bright boys and girls aren't we all going to participate as of tomorrow my name is sis Heslop and this is sis Barnaby and we'll be your quiz master so come prepared so I want you all to listen come prepared as of tomorrow to answer your questions Okay? When I say boys and girls, and I'm talking the bigger ones and the smaller ones, all of us to participate. Why, that's why you're not answering me? Oh, my, my, my sincere apologies. Bigger boys and girls, I want you all to participate as well. Don't you want the gifts that the Lord have in store for you? But the most important gift is to learn the word of God. Aren't you all excited to learn? Yeah. That's what I want to hear. So as of tomorrow, I want to see all participating. Amen? Yeah. All right. Have a wonderful night.
Good night, everyone. Indeed, I want to add my quote of welcome to all of us here tonight. Now, this is the part of the service where everybody, everybody, every single individual is allowed to participate. This is a time when we collect the evening's offering. And I must let you know that the offerings will be very useful to this crusade. It takes cash to care. It takes cash to run this program. And so we're asking you to make your contribution night after night so we can keep these meetings going for four long weeks. I'm going to invite us now to stand while we pray for the evening's offering while the ushers stand in place. Shall we stand for prayer? Holy Father, great God, we shout in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Loving Lord, we are indeed grateful for this privilege. We are grateful for the call to be called labors with you. Tonight we ask you to bless the evening's offering. We pray that it will be used wisely for the furtherance of your work. Through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, we beg with thanksgiving. Amen. The windows of heaven are open and the blessings are falling tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. I gave him my old and garment. He gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on heavenly manna. That's why I'm so happy tonight. The windows of heaven. I'm not hearing this singing. And the blessings are falling tonight. Joy, joy, joy in my heart Since Jesus made everything right I gave him my old southern garment I gave him my robe of the white I'm feasting on heavenly manna That's why I'm so happy tonight I'm feasting on heavenly manna That's why I'm so happy tonight I'm feasting on heavenly manna. That's why I'm so happy tonight. One more time. I'm feasting on heavenly manna. That's why I'm so happy Good night, everybody. All right, we need some more juice in the monitors. I don't know if that can be done. And we will get there as we go along. Nonetheless, it is my joy and my privilege to add to the welcome that has been given. Uh, firstly, I want to reach out to some persons, Thursday night they came here thinking we were keeping the meetings. And I said to them, if they came tonight, they were to identify themselves. Are you here? You were coming Thursday night. All right, they didn't make it tonight. Or they haven't arrived as yet. I did have a gift for them. All right, then I promised a gift of a phone card to the person who brought the most visitors tonight. I announced that at church. So some of you who, if you're just coming tonight, you might not have heard it. Uh, who has brought the most tonight? Did anybody bring five friends tonight? Or four? All right. So let me throw it out tonight, tonight for tomorrow night. So tomorrow night, if you should bring the most visitors here, I will have a $1,000 phone card for you, whether it's digital or online that you use. If, if you tie with somebody, well, we split it in two, right? But if you bring the most tomorrow night, I will give that to you. Remember in the nights, now, when you come and you bring your friends, you must register them at the front. 
and make sure your name is there because this gift here, it's a brand new fan that I want to give away on Thursday night for the person who brings the most for the entire week. So those who bring the most visitors for the entire week, this brand new fan will be yours to cool down, right? So, who's going to take on the challenge? Let me see. One, two, three. I thought we had more stout-hearted people, man. All right? So I want to give this nice fan away on Thursday night for you have who bring the most visit. So your visitors must add up over Tuesday, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and on Thursday night, then we will see who has brought the most. And guess what? If you're a visitor, if you're a member of the community, you can get the fan as well. All you need to do is you bring out your family and your friends. And once your number is the most, you can. So it's not only a church member that can win it. Anybody. It's in, if you're a child, bring out your grandmother, your auntie, your uncle, your cousin, and so on. And you will receive this special gift. All right? So thank you. Thank you, Elder. And, 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 and well, you know, we need to have more than the 12 disciples, right? The number that, that so, 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 you, remember, you can add up, you can build up to it. So if you bring five tonight, then you bring three tomorrow night, then you bring six there, you can build up, right? Or if you bring back the same set, that also adds up as well, right? So bear, please, please bear that in mind. Secondly, I want to welcome and introduce to this part of the vineyard, Pastor Anthony Ball. He's our director for personal ministries at our headquarters at 74 Constant Spring Road. I want to invite him to bring greetings to us at this time. Let's welcome him with a round of applause. Yes. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Tyrell, my good friend, Batchmate in university, very, very energetic, man full of energy. Now, I am on familiar grounds. 28 years ago, who remember? 28 years ago, this is where the Olympic, uh, Olympic what now? What's the name, what's the full name of the church? All right, this is where the Olympic Way SDA Church began. I was here from day one until it finished. Every night, every day. And I walked all these roads up to Utpeka and Alcoma Road and all of these places uh, winning souls for Jesus. 28 years ago with Evangelist Ming and the reader. Do you remember the reader? How must you forget the reader? No, no, no. The reader was as powerful as the preacher. He's a pastor who has died. Alan Garden. Alan Garden. He was as powerful as Alan Jones, rather. He was as powerful as the preacher. A matter of fact, the two made it so wonderful for us 28 years ago. That's where the Olympic Way Road had its start. And let me see those who were here 28 years ago. All right, all right, all right. Some have gone other places. I know individuals who are overseas, and I know individuals who are under the ground waiting for the return of the Lord. One of those individuals is Elder Jackson, a brother Jackson. His property is where the church is. He owned that property. So I know this place. But things have changed. Things have changed. Back in those days, when you say evangelism, everybody's ready. When a tent is pitched, people come. But it's a different time now. So what that means? That means that we must work harder as members. Amen? It has become harder to win souls. So we have to work harder, pray harder, be more committed to what is happening here. Because if you don't, 
then the success that the Lord will have us to have at this path won't be realized. So I'm looking forward to hear wonderful things from this part of ground with our evangelist, Evangelist Brown. I have known Evangelist Brown for a number of years. We have worked together already. I can tell you he's a powerful man of God. Amen? Amen. And so I would love for you to give him 110% of support. Amen? I must also tell you that we have a number of evangelistic series started uh, just about a week ago and we are going up to the end of August that come under the banner ASI. And this evangelistic series is one of those that come under the ASI banner. Uh, the Adventist services and industries, lay people, are giving their support in some way. I can't tell you exactly how now, but they are giving their support. The business people from the lay services in the Adventist church, they are giving their support. And so we're looking forward to hear great things from this spot of ground. And I believe that as we are faithful, God will give the success. I bring you greetings from our administrators, our president, and Dr. Merrick Walker, and uh, our executive secretary and treasurer, and the other directors of the conference. And they are with you, and you will see them. They'll come and give support. May God bless you as we continue doing the work of the Lord together. And one of these days, when the work is done, we will hear, well done. May God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Ball. And so at this time, let me ask the praise team to come forward as we prepare tonight to receive for the first time our evangelist. And since Pastor Ball has introduced him as a man who has been on the mission field for a number of years, who loves the Lord, who desires to see so many, in fact, all enter into the kingdom of God over these next few weeks as we join hands and hearts together. But I say to us, let us hear the word of the Lord. Drawing near to God is one decision that influences all other decisions in your life for the better. All other decisions as you draw near to God you influence all of the decisions in your life for the better. And so tonight, hope in your heart and may the word of God find fertile soil in our hearts. And so we have our evangelist tonight, Evangelist Honeil Brown. May heaven come down tonight. May the spirit of God touch every heart. And may we leave here determined to make heaven our home. We will have the meditation song that prepares our heart for the word.
and Father. Tonight, we give you thanks for this privilege that we have to come on this part of ground to lift you up. We pray, O oh God, that you will consecrate this spot of ground one more time for your honor and for your glory. I pray, O oh God, that everyone that come underneath this tent, that when they should have leave, they would have never left the way they have come, but they would have declared that indeed we have been with Jesus. So we pray, O oh God, through your Holy Spirit, that you will run a curfew up and down in this place. That you will run a curfew throughout the environments around here. That you will arrest the hearts of men and women, boys and girls. That they will answer to the call before time turns into eternity. Oh God, I believe that you are giving a final warning. Somebody will be coming to the final events. And the next voice they will hear is the voice of Jesus. It's either he will declare, come or depart. But I pray that tonight somebody will answer the call. The call of accepting Jesus as their personal Savior. Sweet Holy Spirit. I beg you now, take full control of this lump of clay. Use me as you have never done before. And at the end, we will be careful to give you the honor and the praise. Let the church say, Amen and Amen. Good evening, everybody. If you are alive, let me hear you say amen. amen. Ah, that sounds good. That sounds good. Everything that have breath, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I, I am happy to be here with you tonight. And I'm happy to see you. You are looking good. But you would have looked even better if you bring somebody else with you. Oh, you're not with me. You're not, you're not with me. You're not with me. You are looking what? Good. You'd be looking better if you bring somebody with you. So I am asking that tomorrow night when you coming, that you bring somebody with you. And if you don't have a friend, bring your enemy. This is the place to make it up. Oh, you're not with me. So I'm happy to see you. I'm happy to have my good friend, Pastor Bar, with us. Amen? Amen? It is not always easy for men like these to be in our company because there's too many calls. But we're happy that he take the time out to be with us. And so we're happy to have you with us. Amen? I don't know about you, but I think the time is hot. Look over me, I sweat. I like may I have to go look some people and bring tomorrow night so I can win the fun day. You know how much it costs for your fun? A couple thousand dollars. But underneath the tent, you'll get a brand new fan, and all you have to do is bring your friend come. So it won't cause your pocket. Amen. So I'm asking you, bring your friends and come tomorrow, register them. And I would encourage you, if you want to win the fan, can I tell you how to win the fan? Bring 10 persons come tomorrow night. And the following night, bring 10 more. How much that? Anybody beat that? Have to bring 30. Oh, you're not with me. You're not with me. But we are happy to be here tonight. And I'm going to tell you, we're going to study the word. This is the place where we are going to tell you. And this is what we are going to tell you. If the Bible says it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. If the Bible says it. If God commands it. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus. But to what? 
but to trust and obey. And I'm going to invite you that when you come in the night, you come with an open mind and a clear conscience. Is that all right? Is that all right? Because I will tell you this, if it is not, if I am not presenting Bible, don't come back. So you got to bring the Bible tonight. Let me run into God's word and send you home quickly. Is that all right? Tonight we are looking on the theme, the real truth about God. You see, there are people who know about God. There are people who hear about God. But I want you to understand, we don't want to hear about him. We don't want to know about him. We want to have a relationship with him. Because when you have a relationship with Jesus, it makes a difference. Are you with me, somebody? Ah, uh, come with me. Come with me. Oh, God, I am what? So lonely. Can I tell you tonight that loneliness are eating out the very core of people's hearts tonight? There are lonely people in Olympic Way. Can I tell you the possibility there is somebody tonight underneath the tent that is lonely. But I want you to understand that the scientists would have told you that you must have at least one person that you care for or who cares about you. Oh, you didn't see that. You see, my adopted grandmother always says, me must have. I, I'm, am I talking Jamaican language down here? Is that all right for me to talk Jamaican language? But she always declare, I believe that she must have somebody in the house with her that should in case she took sick in the night, if she can call, she cannot. A matter of fact, when you check Genesis, the Bible says that when God created Adam, he said it is not good for the man to be alone. Understand that God created us as social beings. A lot of crime would have committed a few weeks ago when COVID had the world under control. Because people were locked down, locked up in their house. They are not able to socialize. Some people even mad. And can I tell you, it's just the mercies of God why we are still in our senses. Am I talking to somebody down here? And sometimes we believe that, hey, I am the one that is in control. But can I tell you, it is the mercies of God that is keeping us. So Ecclesiastes Solomon says what? Whoa. And the word means in a pretty. Am I talking to somebody? You see, when the devil was cast out under the earth, the Bible said the angel said, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. So if the Bible said, Woe to him that is alone for when he falleth. My friends, when you drop, you need somebody to help you up. But can I tell you something? I'm happy to be a friend of Jesus. Can I tell you there comes a time when I can't, I, can I tell you something? There's even time when my wife is beside me in the bed. But I want you to understand there is somebody that is closer. His name is Jesus. It doesn't matter who you are. You need somebody with you. Am I talking with you? Some people today are living on drugs. Because they're lonely. Huh? But oh, 
though some turned to prostitute, but I want you to understand, I hear Jacob was running. He was, a matter of fact, he, he ran away from home because he stole his brother birthright. And one time he decided that I'm going back home, but somehow he believed that his brother is coming back with vengeance in his, in his eye. So one night he stopped by the way, the way the wayside and the Bible said that a stone become his pillow. What a thing to sleep on. When trouble hits you, be me shot, hits you. Jacob was cornered that a tough rock stone becomes pillow. But my brothers and sisters, I'm happy to tell you that when you are cornered, there is a man named Jesus. Can I tell you, he knows no boundary. Amidst Jacob was cornered, God paid him a visit. The Bible said he saw a ladder coming from heaven. The angel was going up and down. But God talked to Jacob. Hear what God says. God said, Jacob, uh, I am. Am I talking to somebody down here? I am with you. And I talk to somebody. Your church member, God left you. Your family member, God left you. But Jesus said, I am. I am with you. What else he said? I will what? I will watch over. You got to understand. You see God is watching over. So if you are watching over something. You cannot be at the same level. With the thing you must be looking over. Round and about. Can I tell somebody. So when God is watching over me. Even when my enemy come. To eat up my flesh. Can I tell somebody. God is watching. A good friend of mine in St. Mary, now deceased, but I told you the story before. They sent man to kill him, and when the man, the, the killer reached to his gate, when he looked up at the house, he saw the A, the house surrounded with some white people. He picked up his foot and run. He came back, he said, brother, they sent me to kill you. But when I come, the amount of dopey. Lord, can I talk to somebody? That is why the Bible says spiritual things uh, are spiritual discern. Uh, so when your enemy come, they can't understand. Uh, they think you and them are running the same level. But when the angel of the Lord uh, encamp it round uh, and about them that fear him, can I tell somebody that uh, do you no know harm? For God is watching over you. So God was saying, Jacob, you don't have to fear your brother. I am watching. A matter of fact, me calm him down a long time. You see that night, God had to even visit him. That the Bible said he wrestled with him all night. When he was done wrestling, Jacob said, look here, God, me now I'll let you go, you know. Until you bless me. Can I tell you something? That when the, when the Lord lick his hip out of Lick the man out of sheep. But you see when you have a determination. Sometimes you have to walk with a mark. Am I talking to somebody down here? But even when God lick his socket, lick his giant other sheep, God said, Jacob said, look here, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Can I tell somebody, when God is with you, hold on! So God said, I watch over you, Jacob. Can I tell you something I hear Job said in Job 22 verse 21? I, well, acquaint now thyself with him. So God, Job was saying it is time to stop. Hear about God, know about God, but get acquainted with God. Even in the church, some of us only know about God. Some of us only uh, talk about God. But we don't know him yet. 
Am I talking to somebody down here? It is time to get acquainted with him. Somebody said, I must be wrapped up and tied up and tangled up with Jesus. You see, when we wrap up and tangled up with Jesus, nobody can move me. So I hear David said, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Queen. So he was saying now, uh, it's time for us to turn. Hear the word. Lift up your eyes and eye and behold who has what? Who has created all these things. Uh, let, let, me, let me interpret something for you. Let me interpret something here for you. You see, this is talking to every and everybody. Because it doesn't take some need to look out. Mm -hmm, no. So the man we can't read can look out. Oh, you're not with me, somebody. You, let me tell you something. You see, I'm a, I'm a nature-driven person. And sometimes when I walk out into nature and look at the hands of God, all I can say, God, you're good. So look an eye. And behold who have what? Created. The evolution is say come out a big bang. But it can't come out a big bang and stay in line. Am I talking to somebody? Anything come out a big bang, turn up in a bang around. Can I tell somebody? But it take a hand. It take a creator to line it up and allow it to wheel and time. Run on with me, run on with me. As they look out into outer space, it says, the heavens declare the what? Ah, and the what? So it is what? Day after, day what? Oh, can I talk to somebody? Night after night, day what? You, you see, sometimes some of us in a Kingston, we don't know what's going on, you know. And somehow we love tell country people say, "Oh no, come from country, a good place, a good place." A few weeks ago, I was in a place in Saint Mary, and I tell you this: I, I said to the man, "Man, I can imagine when night come. You know, hear no boombox." You know, hear no disturbance. You hear the sound of the cricket and the toad and the different things playing music. You can smell fresh air. I said, God has designed it for us to live in. But somehow we are love run left country called living a pollution. And then we are going to tell, call the prime minister, call the government, say, look here, river town garbage at Bon windows. Ah, hi, 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 hi. Can I talk to somebody? But I want you to understand that when you are in a place where you can recognize and see the hands of Jesus. Oh. He said before they design telescope where they can look into outer space Man with a naked eyes look out and started to count. So they might count stars and they come up to 5,119 stars. But me wonder how we count it. I remember as a little boy, you know, live up in the bush. So one day we visit down a place called Williams Field. So that's where most of the vehicle would run from Mandeville heading into Kingston. And we would be up on a hill. And you see, I grew up in the bush. When you, know, when you see one vehicle, run, go look. 
Am I talking truth? Am I, do I have a weakness in the house? Do I have a weakness? But, but I want you to understand when I come to Lang Hill, we call the place Lang Hill, and we up at Lang Hill and we are looked down at William Seal. And I see one vehicle, I said to my brother, Rise, see one day, see one another one day, see one another one day. When I look in the heavens uh, and I try to count stars, uh, see one day, see one. Why, me stop count long time? Cannot count. Let me run on. Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 33, verse 22, the host of heaven cannot. And let me help you to understand, Jeremiah, it cannot be numbered by man. With all the, I was I was watching a, a little TikTok thing with, with this with this brother. This comedian and he had a little boy, and as soon as he couldn't tell the little boy the match, before he done done say it, the little boy is match it up already and give him the answer. They call him genius. But with all of his genius, he cannot count it. So the house of heaven cannot be numbered by man. But can I tell you my brothers and sisters. There is a God who created them. And the Bible said not only that he created them. But every one of them have a name. And can, I, can I put you to the test now? Watch me now. Watch me now. I'm now moving towards my hundred. And I have two girls and sometimes me confused with their name. So sometimes they say you have two people and you don't know who is who. Can I tell somebody down here? But I want you to understand when my God decided to call Mars, he's not calling Mars Jupiter. And maybe when they call Mars, I want a holy pastor that. Hello somebody. But oh my friends, the, the, the writer says that our home is a spiral of over 200 billion stars. Planet Earth is a dot. Of over 200 billion stars. It is declared and says that the huge... 200 inch hail reflector and Panama mountain can see as many as how much? What is millions galaxy inside a wedding called the Big Dipper One? Oh, you didn't see that. If I look inside at the Big Dipper, I see so much star, and that is only what they call the Big Dipper. I don't know who is Big Dipper. Because those who master guide Mr. Lem up there, and they say, see, frying pan there. I see Big Dipper there. But I know me no know frying pan from Dutch pot. Am I talking to somebody down here? But I don't worry about frying pan from Dutch pot. What I want to know is the man who control frying pan and Dutch pot. Can I tell you something? His name is Jesus. He called his servant Abraham one night. He said, son, prophet, let me tell you something. I'm going to give you a challenge. Look now towards the heaven and start to count the stars. And I tell you something. Abraham was so obedient till him fool. He started to count. God stopped him and said, look here, you know what? The long and short of it, I will multiply your seed as the star. Down here. And if you want to know how many stars is there, I will tell you, go by the seaside and start to count the grain of sand. Yeah. 
Some, sometimes ago, I noticed the news. One news of them thief son. Did you remember that one? Thief, how much truckload of sand gone wherever. But can I tell you, the amount of truckload of sand that them thief, God knew it. If you want to know how many are there, started to count. He said, I will multiply thy seed as the sun upon the seashore. Am I talking to somebody down here? So if I give you a challenge from now till tomorrow, and even if I tell you I'm going to give you an AC, you still can't count a bucket of sun. But my God knows it. Am I talking to somebody? And sometimes we have the audacity trying to put God into a capsule. We're trying to match up God with our little intellect. We are crazy. When I consider thy what? The work of thy fingers. The moon, the stars, he said. What? What? His man. In other words, the writer was saying, when we consider as powerful God is, and some of us, we have the audacity to put our face in the face of God, but God still loves us. What is man? God is running down some of us for years now. And we think because we're bold and we're beautiful. Think that because we have a few dollars in the, in the bank, can I tell you something? We think that because we have some, some letters behind our name, we are bigger than God. But can I tell you, the day God decided to tell you, stop breathing, you are dead. What is man? So I hear the African say, Jesus, you love me too much, oh. Too much, oh. Boy, what a God. Am I talking to something? Sometimes, sometimes I'm happy that God is not like bro. Because if God was like bro, none of us dropped dead long time. Oh, am I talking to somebody? If God were like some of us, none of us dead. With all of our frowning, with all of our up and pump and pride, God still loves us. What a God! But I want you to understand that as much as God is a loving God, one day God will look down into Olympic way and declare, Enough is enough! One day he's going to give his final call. One day he's going to give his final message. So let me tell you something. Come down off of your high horse. Get to know God. And even if it's some hypocrites in your way, tap on them. Oh, you're not with me. You're not with me. You're going to tell me, preacher, too much hypocrite down there. And let me tell you something. Hypocrite can't save you. It is Jesus who saved me. Can I tell somebody, when I turn down to the hospital, I have my sickness. But when I look down there, I see cancer piercing. I see ears piercing. I see some sore foot. But I want to see the doctor. So I'm going past them. I'm going to Jesus. So turn there with your sickness. And watch and see if you're not dead with it. Ah. And there you go, blame. Blame me. Mm -hmm. Blame me. Not a sparrow fall without God notice. So every time one little bird drop dead, God tick off his number. Am I talking to somebody down here? Hear the word. So don't be afraid. Woo. 
Don't worry. Because if God concern about a little bird, may have more value than that. God died for brown. He never died for bird. It means that I have more value. It is time to put value on your life. If man no value you, if man don't value you, turn to Jesus. And if you don't value yourself, turn to Jesus. He will give you value. So me not have a bleach out from me born black. I'm a proud of that. I'm going to get into trouble. I'm going to get into trouble. Am I talking to somebody down here? I want to let you understand. I value myself. So I don't have to drink some alcohol beverages. I value myself. I don't have to burn out my brain. But had it not been for the Lord and my sight. Oh, can I, I'm not here to tell a rum drinker that there is no hope. Because you are looking at once a rum drinker. Oh, you're not with me, somebody. I'm not here to tell the smoker there is not any hope. You are looking at once a smoker. You are looking at a gallus. When I get my first calling, when I get my first calling, it was right there at Amara Road Church. But because a woman me said, no, 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 no. I make a pastor I slap every excuse not to sign. I said, look here, man. And him, sometimes, sometimes me I walk across Amara Road and all me hear somebody say, O'Neal, he see me when me not see him. But thank God, amid I reject his call, he comes running after me. I want you to understand that God is running after you tonight. Here underneath this tent. God is running after you. That is why you are not dead yet. My Bible reminds me it is not the desire of God that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So God is making sure. But every time you reject God, you are sealing off your destiny for hell. We run on. Every, even the very here, and your head is numbered. Huh? How much of us know how much the eyebrow we have? I didn't say count your head. Just count a little bit over your eyelash. If you have any, for some of you creep it off. Am I talking to somebody? And even some of us church members creeping it off. You know what you are telling God? Say, God, you know, don't make me yet. Am I talking to somebody? Uh, you know what I preach, but I go and preach. It is declared that if you should take a spaceship to travel to the nearest star, and watch me now, it is declared that some years ago, before transportation is such at high speed, they would have declared that man cannot travel at certain speed, they will dead. Did you know that? But now they are saying, if you want to take a visit to the nearest star to planet Earth, so if you should take a space shuttle 
and you are traveling at a hundred. Or you are traveling at 25,000 miles per hour. Watch me carefully. Our speed limit here in Jamaica is 110. Why some that? Oh, you're not with me. I said, sometimes when I go up in the guillotine and I feel good, especially when I go up on the highway, I'm a road. And boy, Nissan answer to the car, you know. I may recognize that the little vehicle start traveling at 140 miles per hour. And we still a push it and it's still a guard. But it still take me a few hours to get to which point I want to get. Now they are saying travel at 25,000 miles per hour. It would have taken you 120 years to get to the nearest star. That when you get there you're dead. Because we don't have nobody 120 now. Am I talking truth? I don't think they have that record yet. But my brothers and sisters, one of these days I'm going to break that record. I don't know about you, but it's going to take me through the heavens of the heavens. It's going to take me through the starry heavens. I'm going to the heavens and heavens. And as soon as I studied the prophecy, it helped me to understand. After seven days, I will be home at last. Saying goodbye to the sin concert. Saying goodbye to COVID. Saying goodbye to drugs. Saying goodbye to warriors. Saying goodbye to hypocrites. Saying goodbye. Saying goodbye. Home at last. Thank God Almighty. I'm home. I want to be with Jesus. Oh, my friends, when I see some of us rejected God for some simple little things, for a rum glass, for one man we are beat till night noon, am I talking to somebody down here? Rejected God for your gun, but I stop out to tell somebody one of these days it will be over. Behold, the hosts, the stars who had Behold, I need to change this color. Oh, hi, the stars, oh, hi, are they? Huh? When you think about a little watch, how complicated it is. I had a watch. I had a watch which they says, all you need to do is to put it on your hands and shake it and it works. I can go underneath the water to a certain depth. And one day something wrong with it, I took it to the jeweler. And the man is telling me, say, one little something, he can't even see it good. It's weird out. But when you think of how the creator have to find those little things and Probably use a little tweezer to put them together. And it works. And every gear move and time behind each other. Look at the hand of God towards our creation. Everything is put together. Everything move and time. Planet Earth, it is now declared, is traveling through outer space at some 66,000 miles per hour. And it has never collided with Mars.
God is directing it. In and through him, the universe is one harmonious whole. They are now saying, look here, man, this creation is not no opposite. Am I talking to somebody? So tell Darwin, say, look here, he need to come again. Am I talking to somebody? And the Darwin followers, you need to come again because when you are dying, you are not going to call on Darwin. You're going to call on Jesus. Am I talking to somebody down here? In the beginning, the Bible said God created the heavens and the earth. The, the, the evolution is the daring story will tell us and look here. You see, it, it, it takes a number of years and, and man started to develop from whatever. And then you turn to frog and you turn to monkey. Me no come for no monkey. If Darwin come from monkey, him a monkey man. But I am a creature created in the image of God. Am I talking to somebody? And if man come from monkey, my question is, why monkey stop having man? Huh? Something. But it's not the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Ah, uh, by the word of the Lord were the heaven made for he spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Ah, uh, what a God. All he must do just say the word. Am I talking to somebody down here? When, when, when Mary and Jesus turned up at the wedding, G Mary turned towards Jesus and said, look here. They wind down, you know. Jesus said, woman, what me you do about that? Am I talking to American language down here? Enough for me party. Go talk to the man where I get married. But you know what Mary says? He said to the bearers, do what he says. His words make a difference. It's not what pastor said. It's not what your relative said. It is what the word of God says. And that is why I tell you, if I am not presenting Bible, don't come back. And I will tell you something. Can I tell you something? Some of your pastor go and tell you say, oh, come down here. Because they don't want you to hear Bible. Am I talking to somebody? But if you want to hear Bible, come tomorrow. Come tomorrow night. Says he what? He has made what? By his what? He had what? By his what? And he has what? So you know what, the, right, what Jeremiah is saying? Look here. God do it at his own discussion. You know one. None of us advice. And sometimes some of us may think, say, boy, it, it can't done without me. God do without me. He do it how he wants to do it. He tell the sea, say, look here. Stop. And with all the roar, she a roar. She never pass her border. His what? Eternal power and what? Has been what? Has been what? Clearly what? In the what? That have been made. So let me tell you something. My grandmother would say, look, you're none so blind as those who don't want to see. So as clear as the hands of God is, if you don't want to see it, you are blind to it. And you will never see it. Am I talking to somebody down here? And that is why I will tell you, say, when you are coming, come with a open mind. 
Let me run on quickly. When we consider these things that have been created, look at the sun. Isn't it hot now? Can you imagine if it was a little bit closer to the earth? Huh? We burn up long time. But if God pull it a little bit further from earth, we would have been frozen. I, 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 I was, I think it was one winter I was down there in Florida. And so, my sister, my cousin's brother had just flown back to New York and he flown to the ice and he showed me one day himself with the snow falling behind him. I said, you can't turn up there with it. One evening, I was standing outside. I just had my shower and I was standing outside and I was so cold. I see my knees started to vibrate like some whole big foot truck when I have no mount. And I said, man, if I just call it cold, so suppose me the dip on the ice, me knee cup jump out. But God had fixed the ice box where he wanted it. But he also fixed the sun where he wanted it. And all the years and with all of what has happened, it has never moved out of its peace. Because the hands of God is in control. Am I talking to somebody down here? Great are thy works. Matthew 5, 45 says what? For he maketh the sun to rain and the rain to fall upon the what? Huh? When you look and see how some people wicked, but God make rain fall for them ground too. Huh? Boy, if I'm, I'm, I tell you, God, I'm happy you're not like brown for me. Now stop rain fall for all over some of your place. But God in his mercy still lavish his love upon us. Some of us, we burn God and we burn church and we burn preacher. He still lavish his love upon us. Huh? When you consider the, the water that we drink, sometimes you know where it comes from. The same mucky water where you see around, you don't see if you good God. That. And you pass and you skin up your nose. But God allowed the sun to come down. Evaporate it. He sent it through his filter. And send it back to you in rain. And you drink it and you burp. Am I talking to somebody? But here still we're trying to fathom God. Huh? Don't try to fathom my God. In his hands is the what? Of every creature and the what? He created it. Not in vain for he what? Formed it to be inhabited. So with all of God's creation, God created it for us to vase into it. Huh? We consider the bird. Uh, if you consider the birds, sometimes you see some and sometimes you don't see some. Some of them, you know, I, I always observe when I, when I sat there in Florida because their climate is just like a Jamaica. I tell folks, look, it's just the development up there make the difference. But there are some birds that when it moves towards winter, them left the north and they head for the south. When you look on the light, the, the light wires, they string it out like ants. Who oh, direct their little brains and look here, fly over the mountain, down the valley. You are heading because ice is coming. Who direct them? Say, look here, your food is about to finish. It's time to take your flight. They say when you consider the bees, 
His little brain is no bigger than a pinhead. But yet still he make the cone. Gather the pollen. And, and sometimes when I watch them, they, they get up before some of us wake. And they said it is declared that a bee would have traveled up to seven miles to collect pollen. And when they come back and you put 50, they call it 50 colon boxes together. And if one make the mistake and go into the wrong box, he's dead. So when he come, how he knows a boy and a female yard and a female yard? But his brain is as big as a pitted. Huh? But ask the animal and they will what? Teach you or the bird of the ear. And they will tell you. He go on to say or speak to the earth. And it will teach you. My brothers are let the fish of the sea inform you. Which of these does not know that the hands of the Lord has done it? Even the animals knows the work of God. And those who was created in the image of God to think like God reject God. But I run on home on quickly. Our sovereign Lord, you have made the heaven the earth. Nothing is too hard for you. Ah, uh, for I am the Lord, I change not. So what, with all what we are doing, we can't change the mind of God. With all our rejection, with all we turning our backs upon him, with all we not answering, and all what we have been doing, God still love us. Yeah, he said, I have loved you with, with an everlasting love. The love of God is unconditioned. I've seen people happily running down to the altar said they are in love. But as soon as later, as a little issue comes up, they love God. But with all of what we have done to him, he still loves you. Oh, I am confident. Oh, you're not with me. You're not with me. You're not with me. I am convinced that neither death nor life nor the angels now any demons. Oh, you're not with me, my friends. Can I bring it home practical? I am confident. Uh, I know that none of you can separate me from the love of Jesus. Send your demons. Uh, send your demons. Uh, it cannot separate me. Don't call me. Don't look at me. But it cannot separate me from the love of Jesus. So when you make church members separate you, you never love yet. When you make your friends separate you, you never love yet. But I want you to understand as much as you have walked out on God, he's still like Adam looking, calling, come home. Would you answer his call? Ah, uh, hear what he says. Can a woman forget her suckling child? Can a woman bring that child for nine months? Some had some rough time of pregnancy. Can't sleep. Can't eat. Everything you digest, it comes back up. 
But yet still at the end of nine months, you drop it by the wayside for a dog to eat it. For nine months, you walk and left it on the wayside. Yes! She can forget her child. Yes! She will reject her child. Yes! Said, ye will not forget you. Some of us, if you check our record, some of us were rejected by parents. Matter of fact, one doctor told me that I was separated from the womb. That's why I tell some folks, I look here. When you decide say you get pregnant, think good. It's not just to lay down and get up with pregnancy. Am I talking to somebody? If you are not ready for it, it's a serious road. Now they come up with some things. You, know. you see them sit down and they might chat some sitting. Out of them mad sick head. I heard one child say, look here, they're going to sue their parents because they never tell her or tell them if you can't trouble me when we did that. Am I talking to somebody down here? So our law will be that when you go down to, to Jubilee Hospital, you can't say it's a male or a female. You go down there, go have one object. So when, you, when, when, when the object come to sense, the object decides that me a puss or me a dog. Am I talking to somebody down here? So sooner or later you're going to have some human dog. Well, them already call themselves dog. All, it, all some church members say, what go on dog? No, call me no dog. Me a man created by God. He created dog. A matter of fact, God didn't create a dog. He called dog into being. But when he decided to make brown, the Bible said God knelt down and he formed man from the dust. That's how close I am to the bosom of God. So don't call me about no one dog. It's an insult to God. God says, your mother will forget you. Behold, he said, I have what? Engrave thee. They drive him up to dead man's hill. Throw him down. And that whole ragged cross took those rusty spikes without any, any guts of feeling. That they are dealing with a human being. They drive those nails to the palm of his hands without mercy. But God was looking down in an Olympic way tonight. He saw you. Yes, he saw you. Yes, he saw you. He said, look here. I am going to carve your name into the palm of my hands. Every time he looked into the palm of his hands and he saw your scars. He saw the scars. He called your name. How much of us I love my wife. But I don't think I'm ready to go down that road. Am I talking truth? You're quiet now. Because some of you have some holy mouth and you chat some crap. But I'm a realistic person. I don't think I'm ready for them to lift me, drive me to kneel, drive nail to me, torturing me. When they lift that, that whole rugged cross and drop it into, the, into that hole, the weight of his body, tear the palm of his hands. But 
When he was on the cross, you and I was on his mind. He knows you. Yes, he, he loves you. He whose glory make the heavens shine. Can I tell you tonight? I'm so unworthy. I've such mercy. I am not worthy tonight. I am not worthy tonight. Some promises. I'm here to give you the reality. It is Jesus' time now. Politicians fail. Doctors fail. Man fail. But tonight, let's prove his love by allowing them to nail him to the cross. Do you love him tonight? Do you love him tonight? Tonight I give you Jesus. Would you accept him tonight as your personal savior? If this is your desire tonight, to accept him as your personal savior, to tell him thanks tonight for dying on the cross of Calvary, would you stand with me tonight? With your heads above, can I invite Pastor Bo as he prayed for us tonight? Would you talk to Jesus tonight for us? Look down in Olympic way and have mercy on somebody who time after time he has called. But I want you to understand, friends, that this could be your final call. Tonight, I want you to see him hanging on the cross because somehow he's looking down in the Olympic way and he's saying, I want to give you life. And it is your desire. It's either you can reject it tonight or accept it tonight. I ask you to make one more move. If this is your, really your desire to follow Jesus, just walk down and join us at the altar as we pray tonight. Sing the song. Just join me at the altar tonight. Come, let me pray together. Would you put your hands in the hands of Jesus? Just walk down. Can I invite any of those who are serious? Just walk down tonight. You have been baptized. Maybe you're a member, but tonight you want to recommit your life to Jesus. You want to stand on the solid shore of Jesus tonight. Just walk as we pray. Come. Seems like you don't understand me. I'm inviting everyone to come down tonight to the altar as we pray. Just come down with me tonight. I invite the members to come with me tonight. I invite the church to come with me tonight as we pray together. Just come. Just come. Recommit your life to God tonight. 
re agonize with God tonight. Look at him on the cross tonight. See how much time you have hurt him. But he still carved your name in his hands. Night to show him your love. Just walk down and come. Pastor Bar will be praying for you. Eternal God and Father, once again you have spoken to our hearts through your manservant. You have reminded us that you are the great creator, the one who created everything, the one who upholds everything. The one who is in charge of the entire universe. But in spite of how big you are, you still love us. And your desire is to abide in our hearts. Lord, we can't figure it out. Lord, there are many things we just don't know. There are some things that are just bigger than us. But tonight we come, Father, not so much seeking to understand the mysteries of this universe. We come with open hearts, telling you thanks for your goodness and mercy, telling you thanks, oh God, for your loving kindness. Telling you thanks, oh Father, that in spite of us, in spite of our wretched condition, in spite of the fact that we have rejected you over and over again, you are still reaching out to save us. What a God you are. What a wonderful Savior. What a wonderful Lord. Tonight, Lord, in this community, there are two sets of people. There are those who are beating down the gates of hell even now. Forcing themselves into hell, bombarding hell. All across Olympic Way, there are people forcing down the gates of hell. To get in. But Lord, there's a little group of individuals right here who are saying, Lord, in spite of all that is happening out there, I want to travel on the narrow way. I want to walk into the gates that are wide open for my salvation. Oh Lord, this is a special set of people. Even those who have not yet surrendered their lives to you and are standing here, they are different. They have walked away from the gates of hell and they have come to the place where the gates of heaven are open wide. And they are saying, Lord, I want to walk in. I pray, Father, that you may seal the decision of each and every one of your children May, Father, everyone who came here tonight will leave with the conviction that heaven is my home. No turning back. No turning back. And, Father, as we go to our various homes tonight, go with us. Let your divine Holy Spirit abide in our hearts. And bring us back out tomorrow night. Bring out the visitors. Continue to empower your man's servant and use him mightily under this tent. And when this evangelistic campaign shall have come to an end, I pray, Father, that many will surrender to you. This is our prayer and asking 
in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Until tomorrow night, walk with the Lord. Remember, the challenge is if you bring 10 visitors, that, that's the way to win the fan. If you bring 10 visitors tomorrow night and 10 the following night, you're heading for the fan. So bring out your friends. Bring your auntie, your uncle. Tell your mommy and your daddy that something good is happening underneath the tent. So as you go, we sing, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. All choir members, could you meet just for a minute, please? All choir members, meet for a minute. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me.